All right, guys, welcome to today's live um, event. Thank you for sending in all your questions. Um, I'm not going to be able to get through all of it, and I apologize. There was a lot of questions, but one of the ones that I saw that were, you know, you guys keep asking was because of the last episode of post training, how do you move from center, right? So, Chris, can you please come in? I thought maybe I can talk a little bit about that. Um, moving from center is not a trick or a technique, it's an engine or a way of getting power. Basically, it's an attribute. Because of that, it actually influences everything that we do. For example, I didn't uh, bring a punching pad, but if you were to hit, say if you're going to go for an elbow, right? If you torque your whole entire body, like with your wing chip or like in other more sharp we might be shifting, then you can get some power out of it, right? But because if there's such a big movement, Chris can see it, and therefore he loaded up, right? But if I move from the center, he can barely, he can barely see it. So therefore, you get a lot of power while bracing into a snitch. That would also help your punches, like if Chris tenses up a bit and I hit, and you can see the punch coming. I won't go that hard, but you can see it just tends up and breathe because you can see it. Right? If I go from here, you know, that was light, and I didn't really hold my fist, but you can't see it. And that's one of the advantages, right? It also, um, for those that practice sticking, it also influences sticking. If I were to move my body in turning, his body can feel it. So Chris can walk whenever he feel like and hit back if I start moving my body. See, as soon as Chris feel it, because I'm torquing, or if I tax out, he can start blocking if he wants, right? Or he can block, right? But if I move from the center, he can't really feel it on the time until I'm in, right? He can't feel it because I'm doing micro small movements. And that would also change his style. Like he can feel and block and tell he can't if I move from here. But if I start, instead of torquing, I do small movement in my belly, he can't block that because I took his balance for a second. Right? Right? So it influenced all the drills. It also influenced application. Like if we're to do a basic drill, like a street punch, and we're going to go for locks or something. If I were in here, for example, right? and I want to lock Chris's arm, maybe you can see it better than this way, and Chris doesn't let me, right? I can't move him if I'm using my body, because he can feel it. But if I move from my center, he doesn't let me do it, it doesn't matter, right? Because his body didn't feel it. I'm going to explain why I didn't feel it. Like, for example, if you get, like, someone kayaking or something, right? And sometimes when there's an accident, is because the kayak's on top of the water and the water's calm. But maybe here, there's a lot of spinning and it's sucking the kayak in. But while you're pedaling or something, right, when you're moving, you can't see what's going on underneath. So it's the same. Chris can feel this. He can feel my arm. He can feel me pushing. So if I use my shoulder to torque, his body can feel it. So he can resist it, right? Even if I have a torque like this, he can feel it. And he can resist this because he can feel it. Doesn't matter how hard I use my abs. But if I move from my center, he can't feel what's going on in my legs right now. He can't feel what's going on in my center. So, so it's easy. Right? That's why we move from the center. Same, even if I had him in a, here, and I went for this lock, he doesn't let me do it. Very popular lock. And I'm torquing my body hard as I can. He's a lot bigger than me. I can't move him. If he doesn't let me do it, I move my center. Again, you can't feel what's going on in my center. It doesn't let me do it. It doesn't matter. That's why we move from the center. If I make a shorter in that, his wrist will probably break. This will influence all the stripping of blades and gun disarms. Sometimes you see someone take a gun away from somebody and they strip it this way, right? But don't let me do it, Chris. I can't move, Chris. But if I move from my center, even if I go slow and he's 100 pounds heavier than me, right? And that's without hitting. Of course, you hit the guy a couple of times first. So that influences your grappling and your locking as well. This is not a style thing from moving from center. Each one does it. Tai Chi, Bagua, Shinyi, Aki Jiu Jitsu do it. I even met some really high ranking Jiu Jitsu and Judo people that do it. So it's a mechanical thing, not so much a style thing. Okay. Okay. We'll be right back. So when you're doing this, it's important to look at it like. Um, not so much a technique, but a way of moving from a certain part of your body. Eventually, then the top half can relax. It's kind of like if you look at an iceberg, you see the top, but what's going on in the bottom is what you can't see, but that's actually 99% of it, right? Same thing, when you start throwing your power out with torquing, I'm not saying that's not good. We do it in Wing Chun quite a bit when we're shifting. It's actually a good thing. 
but you start to later on you make your movement smaller and smaller and you start moving from the center so and not only does it help you grappling like i just did or locking it helps you trapping and sticking it helps you it helps you hitting and power but it also help um when you're putting combinations together when chris get back here i'm going to start showing you how that will feel right but a lot of you have emailed me and asked me, hey, how do you move from your center? There's a lot of exercises, like in Thai, you might do plow hands or silk reeling exercises, movement from your belly. In Bagua, we might move from exercises like this, or even if the cup exercises, moving from your center, right? And in Shin we might practice pulling rope. So there's a lot of ways to learn how to move from your center. But and you can get it through that, through reps. And even in Qigong, sometimes I'll teach the coiling with the hands to help move from the center. And you can definitely get it by doing exercise like that. But in order to move from your center, you'd be a lot more successful if you can first feel your center. And that's where post training comes in that I talked about in the last couple of episodes. When you're post training, there's many, many things that's going on. Like, I just give it a number. Let's say there's 50 things going on. Out of that 50, one of the most basic things is to feel the space in this part of the body between my hands right now. Right? That's your center. And that's one of the most basic things to learn how to feel from there. Once you can feel that space in your body, right by your intestines here, then you can start moving with it, right? So what I advocate people do is instead of because I can teach you a bunch of exercises to learn how to move from there, but then the progression will be kind of wrong. And what happens is then it drags out for years. Instead, to get it really quickly, the proper progression is important. So number one, what you want to do is feel your center before you move from your center. That's where post training comes from, comes in at me. Second thing you want to do is you want to learn how to move from your center in every plane, like this way, this way, this way, and so forth, right? And then the third thing you want to do, once you can do that, is to learn how to do it off applications, right? And uh, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to run you through a progression right now. Actually, Chris can come in so I can show you what I mean. Right? Is everything okay? We'll just have a music thing that I want to... Okay, so I'll just give you an example of what I mean. Um, if I'm standing here like this, I guess there's people here today. <laughs> okay, so if I'm standing here like this, you first you want to learn the post training from Shin Yi or each one to learn how to feel that space in your body, right? Once you can do that, you learn exercise to move from the vectors. Some of it's simply like moving a ball, turning and moving from the ball, or learning how to do cloud hands, or learning how to chain punch and pull rope from your belly. So that's what I was talking about. Then the third thing is, Chris, can you please come in? It'll be an application, right? If Chris takes a swing at me, right? I can spear hard with my entire body and turn. And that's okay. But if I do it from my belly, I no longer have to spear so hard. Swing hard. It doesn't matter, right? What that allows me to do, because I cut the movement about 75%, so it's a lot smaller now, it allows me the combination punch a little bit quicker, right? So now my body can just start, like a, when a dog is shaking water off his body, if this is a dog shake like this, a dog doesn't do big torques, so it allows me to get more strikes in without sacrificing power. Even if I go light, there is power in a short punch like this. If I go, 10 step please, if I just go like this, five inches, this won't hurt Chris, it'll just piss him off. But if I do it from my belly, Right? Now, if he doesn't see it coming, like, and he's a big man, swing as hard as you can swing it. <laughs> so even if you relax, this is important, because the more energy I save when I bridge him, the harder I'm going to hit him with my follow-up, right? And the less that I torque, the harder that he can see it coming. Like, if he swings like that again, and he stops me from hitting him, he can start shield, he can start seeing that, right? But if I move from my belly, he won't see it. So if he shields, after he hits or something, he, he won't be able to stop this, right? If he shields or something, look. I'm scoring every time, because whereas if I do big movement, he can simply clench whenever he wants, right? So instead of doing big movement, he clenched whenever he wants. My step is always on, right? If I go slow, then what I just did is, when he clenched, I hit him in the throat, he 
you left his elbow there for me, so I took his arm down. But if I torque and take his arm down, he doesn't let me, I get loose. But if I do it from my center, he goes, right? So moving from the center is kind of like an engine, is what I'm trying to say. How are we doing for time, right? So I can't bring you through all the post training and all the elements today and all the exercises, because that's an entire course. If you're interested in that, Chris is going to give you guys a big discount on our courses. It's going to be in the banner that you can click below. So I hope that answers your question in moving from center. Then the second question I got today, just going to move the mat really quickly, is the opening of ceiling top. And you guys are asking, what is that movement about? Guys, I guess one of you emailed me and said, you see it a lot in Winston forums and people are arguing about it, right? So I'm just going to give my opinion. I'm not interested in the commercial politics. There's this movement that people are talking about. A lot of times it's kind of explained as the marking of your center line in terms of the middle and also the width, like a box, like you see the fencing chart of an X. So it becomes marking your border because obviously you would never block like this or like this dimension because it would leave the hair wide open. Right? But another way you can look at it, which is less popular, is that this is actually a weapon to arm train in the same time. Much like in Changi, we train the double bombs out, but we never use it like this. Or in Zoom time, we do the double just out, but we never use it like that. We use one arm at a time. But when we're training, we do two arms at a time. So this part, if you take one arm away, it's actually an application. If you look at it from a horizontal point of view, this is a good weapon, like Chris, can you please come in, sir? It's a good weapon to use when you're a little bit too close to punch. If Chris takes a punch at me again, right? There, you can use it in this way as a ram, right? You can also use it when you're doing chisa and he doesn't let me get in, I can't get in. You can use the wedging idea, and look, you know, boost the guy. So that's a good way to get in, right? On the upper level, if we take one arm away, this is actually a following device. If Chris doesn't let me move him, and I'm grabbing like this, he's lost stronger than me. I can't move him. But if I spiral like this, same, on this side, maybe you can see it better. If I go cross like that and use my shoulder muscles, I can't move Chris, he's a lot bigger. But if I follow the form like this, drop my elbow and spiral up, and look, you move. And this goes back to moving from center. Learning how to spiral directly connects with your center. Even if we're doing basic exercises like this, right? And I come in like this, and I turn and Chris, don't let me move Chris. I can't move him. <laughs> from my center. Don't let me move him, Chris. That it goes, right? So those are some of the things I hope that it blends to. Was it? Okay, we're out of time. I hope to see you guys next time. Train hard and stay safe.